you have found me at Morton Station in Dorset. And funnily enough, there's another station in Merseyside also called Morton. And also, there's another station in Gloucestershire called Morton in Marsh. And I figured, because there's three of them, and I also really like Morton in Marsh, why don't we do a point to point, but doing all three Morton stations? So once again, it is time to travel from point to point. Now, there is a slight possibility that right now you are thinking to yourself, Nick, what are you doing? It's the dead of night. Why are you filming the beginning of a point to point? And yes, well spotted, it is in fact almost nine o'clock at night. Um, basically, in short, my rover that I have, I have the Freedom 7 Salent rover, it doesn't allow me to use trains before 9 a.m. And if I were to do the point to point from here, I'd have to travel from Bournemouth to here after 9 a.m. and then begin the 10 hour long journey it would take to go via Morton Marsh to get to Morton in Merseyside. And that would get me home at an absolutely ridiculous hour that I really don't want to put myself through. Not only that, but also more than half the video would be in the dark at night time. Just not great, is it? So instead, I am doing the leg between Morton and Bournemouth on a different day. I hope that makes sense. I uh, cannot lie, this station is a uh, little bit creepy at this time of night. It's just surrounded by pitch black everywhere. It's uh, a little bit unnerving. <laughs> well, not much we can really do apart from wait for the train, so wait for the train I shall. I nearly accidentally got on the quiet coach. That would have been bad for me filming. <laughs> Very much I can film outside when it's pitch black. Oh well. Now normally if I was doing this, you know, in one continuous day, I would be taking this train all the way to Basingstoke, I think, and then I'd change to cross country to go to Reading. Um, but because I'm doing the, because I'm in, you know, I'm based in Bournemouth for this uh, trip, so it's going to be um, here to Bournemouth and then cross country from Bournemouth to Reading instead. So that leaves us with one stop to move. Well, we've completed the first leg now, we've made it to Bournemouth, so time to cut magically to the daytime. See you there. So, a couple of days have passed, and my cross country now to continue on further now from Bournemouth is right here. So, uh, yeah, let's uh, get on. So I don't actually have a seat reservation, so I'm having to find a pair of seats that's available, ideally. Okay, these two are Reading. Okay, sure. I'll definitely be needing that luggage rack, too. Right. Let's, um, let's head off to Reading. Definitely nice to see a cross-country train. This empty for once. Reading from Bournemouth is about an hour and a half on this train, which I think is actually the longest um, leg of the journey we actually have. So it's um, yeah, we can we can be doing a lot of different trains at a fairly good pace. So it's definitely a uh, slight shame as it does mean I am leaving Bournemouth now for the final time, but. I don't know if it's just me, but like there's something that just hits different about Riding a train like this at this time of the morning is just like very not busy, hardly anyone on here, and just have the, the quiet rumble of the train. It's very uh, oddly therapeutic. We've left uh, Basingstoke now, which is the last stop before Reading, and um, I've been to have a nine minute change at Reading, and we've already left Basingstoke three minutes late, so we're just, uh, ugh, I don't, I don't want to get too delayed, thank you, it's a fairly tight connection. Should be 
pulling in any second now, and we are in time. So now we're at Reading, I need to find where the 1019 Great Western Railway service to Hereford is departing from. So essentially, literally just across from there to here. Nice, that's quite quick. Ah, it's uh, arriving a few minutes early, how convenient. Also, it looks like I don't really need to worry about reservations, there's lots of green lights in the carriages. I will, however, walk down a bit, as it seems like all the Paddington people have crowded the front half. So as you might be able to guess, this is going to be the train service that is going to take us to Morton in Marsh. So, uh, yeah, that's one of the points of this video. It's more of a point-to-point-to-point, -point -point, rather than a point-to-point, -point, simply. Having, like, big trips like this to film where, you know, I've got quite a few bits with singular train journeys that are, like, maybe an hour plus. I mean, yes, it means I have to film a while, but at the same time, it means I can sort of just sit back from it. I'm not running chaotically left and right. It's nice to have a mix of both, I think, for me. Anyway, I will be getting out at Morton in Marsh when we get there, so I'll have a whole hour to kill there. So I don't really need to worry about any delays, unlike the last trip. This is definitely a contrast to, um, you know, last time I travelled between Morton and Marsh and Oxford where I was uh, worried to death about missing the connection. So for the next couple of clips, I uh, had no mic, so I'm going to have to recreate the sounds using my voice. Beep -boop, beep -boop, beep -boop. All right, that is the first point ticked off. Morton in Marsh. Mm -hmm. So, right, yes, Morton in Marsh. We've done uh, half of the objective of this video. So, uh, yeah, we just have to get Morton Merseyside now. I did uh, talk about this in a previous video, but, um, yeah, Morton in Marsh is another station, as well as Morton Dorset, funnily enough, that's got quite a bit of sentimental value to me. I'll, I'll link to where I explain that more in depth in another video. So, yeah, this trip is a sort of a weird personal nostalgia ride as well as a point to point, but, yeah, so... Great, now we just have to get to Morton Merseyside after this. We've got an hour's wait here, let's, uh, let's do it. I think something I might do is use this as an opportunity to quickly go into Morton in Marsh and get a small top-up of food. <laughs> Weather's definitely improved since I was last here. It was very, very rainy last time. <laughs> I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion, but I'll probably go with tuna and cucumber. Why not? Ah, of course, it's that time of the year as well. Take some mini eggs as well, why not? Thanks for shopping at Tesco. Food successfully uh, topped up. Right, yes, back to the station. <laughs> there used to be a sweet shop in that market area. No idea how many years it'll have been closed for by now, but <laughs> that's a shame. Great, so, uh, right, let's, um, wait for the next train to show up. This is a Great Western Railway. I think I mentioned it last time I came along this sort of line, but these trains are so, so empty around this area. Like, yeah, it's so quiet. So this train we are going to be taking to Worcestershire Parkway. So yeah, it shouldn't be too far from here, I don't think. Okie doke, I think after Pershaw it is Worcestershire Parkway. Worcestershire Parkway. So, uh, to actually continue, we're gonna have to head to uh, the low-level platform, so time for 
a pointless journey. I'm kidding, no, we're just gonna walk it. <laughs> This station's always so quiet for such a big station. So we just need to wait on this platform for a little under 20 minutes for the uh, 1314 cross country to Nottingham. It is weird to contemplate the fact that like five years ago there'd have been nothing here. Strange, this is still a very new station, it only opened in 2020. And um, also, why are the platforms so long when like the longest trains I've seen come through here are like three coaches? Someone in the comments will know. For your own safety, you are... So we're off on this train to Birmingham New Street. I'm uh, sat right next to the, uh, the corridor that goes between the carriages, so it's a bit noisy here, but then again, this was really the only free double-seater I could really find here, so I'll make do. University West Midlands Railway, not to be confused with University Tyne and Weir Metro. Okay, Birmingham New Street, and literally, I think, there it is, 1408 to Edinburgh. It's the, uh, the one we need. Brilliant. Wait, is, is, is this the exact tra- That was amazing timing, wow! Right, given I imagine a lot of people getting off here, where is Coach U? There actually uh, isn't a Coach U, it's a nine-coach train, so I'll have to go for Coach. Let's see if I recall correctly. Okay, Avanti West Coast. I think we take this to Crew. But yeah, this train isn't actually supposed to leave for another like 20 minutes, so we've got um, a bit of a while here. The realizations also just hit me now. I think this is my first refurbed nine car Pendolino that I've ever been on now here. Yeah. Before it's been just 11 cars, but I guess they worked onto the nine car ones finally. 20 minutes later and we're finally heading off. It's always very hard to find a seat with an actual view on these pandolinos. It's like, I've only got a tiny sliver and that's the case for most seats here. We are very, very promptly escaping the uh, West Midlands. We've just uh, we've gone through Sandwell and Dudley and Wolverhampton. So we'll have Stafford and then crew. Crew is the next. Literally the moment I start talking. Which is. <laughs> oh, All right, well, we're at. Crew, so we've got about half an hour wait for our next train, which is London North Western to Liverpool. And there was an interesting train I saw while pulling in, so I want to check that out real quick. Yeah, huh. Singular 153. Didn't actually know they came all the way here. Interesting. So, yeah, our trains are 15 30 odd London North Western to Lime Street, so I'll have to find where that is. Yeah, okay. Platform 11. So, yes. This one, again. Somewhat annoyingly, the um, preceding train to the one I'm meant to get is an Avanti to Lime Street, but it's not on my itinerary. I've got an advanced single, so I have to get the London North Western. This train is called... There's a 7.30 here now, too. Is, is it in passenger service or not? I've really not been keeping up with where they've been sent lately. <laughs> Well, there goes the preceding train, so uh, yeah, next one's LNWR. Hmm, a single four coacher, and it's a slash two. Joy. The uh, 
the designers have followed me from Bournemouth all the way up here. So this train's going to take us all the way to Liverpool Lime Street. We're finally getting close to Morton Merseyside after all this time. I can't believe I was filming at Bournemouth like not long after sunrise and now it's almost sunset already outside. I've been filming for that long. <laughs> Alright, we'll be at uh, Lime Street any minute now. Well, now we're at Lime Street, I would say it's uh, Mersey Rail time. These aren't tickets for the actual journey, these are just for getting home later. So our final train we're getting is the 1638 to West Kirby, which we're getting, of course, to Morton. The ticket barriers at these stations always refuse to accept any of my tickets I give them. Always happens. I got to at least see a pep, yay. Anyway, the uh, West Kirby one's in like a three minutes. And it's a 777. Right, yo. I was hoping I could maybe get a 507, but oh well, shame. But I don't even need to say 507 or 8 anymore because all the 508s are gone now. Ugh. Stops Morton at long last after like nine hours. Oh my word, we did it finally. Morton Merseyside from Morton Dorset via Morton in Marsh. Oh my word. But yeah, wow, golly. Morton Dorset to Morton Merseyside via Morton in Marsh, a nine or I guess 10 in total hour endeavor. You know, fun fact, this was actually the first ever point to point I ever had an idea for. Um, I came up with this like a year ago. So I'm finally doing it, which is quite nice, but yeah, good Lord, that was a hell of a ride. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and a comment and a subscribe if you fancy, because my god, this was a lot of effort. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. And of course, a huge shout out to all my patrons and channel members who are listed on screen now. And a warm welcome to my new standard premium patron, Topher. Thank you very much for supporting the channel.